I'm Montana State Superintendent Elsie Arnson, and I would like to congratulate Linda Rost from Baker for the Montana Teacher of the Year 2020. The Montana Teacher of the Year is the highest award that any educator in the state can receive. Ms. Rost will go on with the other educators from across our nation, and I am very confident that she will make Montana proud. Linda, thank you very much for your service to our Montana students, and we are very excited for the award that you are receiving. I also want to share a great thank you to Dylan Huskin, who is Montana's 2019 Teacher of the Year as he completes his tenure. And of course, I want to thank all of Montana's teachers and teacher leaders. Thank you for what you do in your classrooms, in your schools, and in our communities across our state. Thank you for making Montana proud and putting our Montana students first. I um, am so honored and excited and I still have um, imposter syndrome pretty bad because I work with some incredible teachers and administrators and um, other teachers across the state who really inspired me. Um, and even just being at MEA last week um, was really humbling that I get to represent teachers. But I think that I think that I I don't think being Montana Teacher of the Year means that I'm the best teacher. I think it means that I am a representative of all teachers and I'm ready to do that. I'm ready to be a spokesperson for, for Montana teachers. So I'm excited about that aspect of it. Hi, my name is Linda Rost and I teach at Baker High School in Baker, Montana. I love learning with them um, and I, I love watching people learn. I think that's, um, that's really where where teaching clicked with me. And I think I think being, um, when I started and I was on an emergency authorization, I felt very much like a student and that never stopped. Like I've, I've continued to feel like that. I think that was a really good place to start for me. And I just um, kind of felt like I was in that space where I was learning alongside them. Um, and I just love watching them grow. Uh, I, I get to see them from 10th grade through senior year and then beyond growing up into adults. And I love to see that transition. and. I love to watch them grow. I actually was one of the people that nominated um, Linda for Teacher of the Year. Linda does a lot of um, a lot of higher level um, learning projects. She has just brought in so much professionalism to our staff. She's made me want to be a better teacher. I grew up in El Paso, Texas, and then I went to school in New Mexico, and I originally wanted to go and I wanted to be a scientist, so I majored in range science, but about halfway through college, I started realizing that I didn't like that. I was working in the field and in the lab, and I didn't really like how um, isolated it felt, and um, I was tutoring my peers, and I realized I was really good at that and I would sit in the back of class in, in the lecture and I would think to myself like if the professor just did it this way, if he did this demo and this and he taught it this way, all of us would understand it better. And then I would do that with my friends and they would all learn it and so then I started realizing that teaching was my calling and my parents are both teachers. My mom's a math teacher and my dad's a biology professor. So it was kind of a, it was inevitable <laughs> that I would go into teaching. Yeah, Linda, you know, she she's inspired and I mean, she's really inspiring to everyone she's in contact with. So uh, whether that be her students, um, the staff, you know, even my, myself, the administration, you know, she's one, she's a person that when um, you know, she she has such passion for her, for her students, for her subject area, she really um, brings that out and she inspires other teachers to to delve deeper into their subjects and to, to become better. And really she inspires me to be a better administrator. Um, she puts a lot of effort into everything she does and it's um, it's really been a great benefit for the students and, and really all of Baker High School. Just including all aspects of student life. She's fun to talk to. She uh, is good at her job, obviously. She assigns a little bit of homework, which 
is okay because it's good because you're learning. Um, she gets people to come in and speak. We did work on phages and she uh, works hard to bring outside people in and expose the students to other perspectives. So it's pretty cool. I know that she's really dedicated to her job. She thinks about her students all the time, spends a lot of time working on it. It's just nice to see her get recognition for her hard work. I started the science research class here. It used to be horticulture where students worked in the greenhouse. And so I started that the first year and when they hired me, they were like, well, We'll, we'll still call it horticulture, but you can do it as science research and we'll see how it goes. And I think by the first quarter they had changed the name and they realized that we were doing real science and students are getting published and, um, and winning at these at really advanced competitions. So I started that and then I also started anatomy and physiology this year because students are wanting, they're, they're wanting to go into medical fields and they were really wanting more preparation in that subject area, so I started that this year, and then I'm also teaching AP Biology this year for the first time. I knew her when she was um, first teaching in, in Ekalaka, and um, and was so impressed with the, with the job that she did down there with, with the science kiddos and um, her, her work with science research and science Olympiad and things like that. So um, when she um, got the job here in Baker, I was really excited because I knew that she was, she was a rock star and that we would be, um, we would be, you know, really benefiting from her presence in our, with our, with our staff. So, and since she's been here, um, She's done some amazing things um, with, with the science program and innovative and uh, new programs and things like that. So we're just really excited. I would say that I really appreciate um, how um, open and supportive she is of us having our own ideas. She doesn't just sit there and we go through notes and she just teaches at us. It's um, everything is a learning experience for us and for her as well. She's always wanting to know what we're thinking and how we're learning and so how she can um, better teach us. One thing that really motivates me is the fact that I had cancer when I was a kid and I almost died. And after that, like I was pretty motivated before that, but after that, then I really got this drive to like, I wanna make something of my life because I was spared. So I think that's a big piece of my motivation. Um, and then also, this was part of my answer in my interview. I um, had tons of amazing mentors when I was a kid that really intentionally like poured into my life. Um, and I wanna be that person for my students. And I wanna be that person for my teachers, cause I, for other teachers, cause I've also had really amazing teacher mentors um, and professors. And I, so I wanna be that person for them too. And I think that once we learn these skills of how to do certain things and how to be successful, then it's really easy to apply them to lots of things. I really enjoyed um, chemistry. The I like doing um, the basically the she has projects that we can do that at least for in chemistry or yeah basically chemistry. So um, chemistry, she would have um, a lab that she'd set up, and we'd have to find real world uh, problems that we somehow that would be able to fix with using different chemical reactions. I think that um, is awesome because then you're realizing um, how it can be used in the real world kind of to fix issues or major problems that go on today. I think the most important and elite class that we have here is science research. Um, all of my students who have left have said that this was the most important class that they've taken in their high school, sometimes even in their college careers. They don't have opportunities to do independent research otherwise. And so I think that would be the piece where in, in science education that we need to be promoting, where students are doing true inquiry and they're asking their own questions and developing their own experiments and they're being the lead researcher. Um, and I think that can be incorporated into any class. It doesn't just have to be a dedicated science research class. You can incorporate that into even, even at the grade school level. 
I did a program, uh, I do summer camps and um, like PTA science nights and stuff like that. But this summer I did a three day camp where I had third through sixth graders and they were designing their own experiments and presenting it. They were writing up posters and presenting it. And that can be incorporated at any level, even kindergarten. Um, so I think that that's the piece of science education that is kind of one size fits all. And that's the part that we need to be promoting. That can also fit other subject areas too. Students can be doing their own research projects. The questions that they ask and the research that they design in history and English and other subject areas that I don't know anything about. So. So my science research project is with bioplastics and what I'm trying to do with that bioplastic is make it a nut wrap for hay bales. Mrs. Ross helped me out with it like a lot because at first I kind of really did not know like how I was going to do this and then she helped me out figure out how I was going to do my procedures, how I was going to um, alter the um, ingredients into the recipe and what kind of recipe I was going to do because at the beginning of the year we were using banana peels and it did not work out at all. <laughs> She's a, a fun teacher to be around. Uh, she's somebody that, that you can just tell the excitement. And you, you can't help but to just sit down with her for two minutes and see that she just she loves her subject area. She loves her students. She works very hard uh, to make sure that each and every one advance. I, I think some of the kids that are in her classes don't realize they're even learning, so to speak. Uh, by the end of the day or the end of the year, they come out or they go on to high college or something. They come back and they go, wow. Uh, I can't believe how well prepared she had me and I didn't think I learned that much in her class. So she makes learning fun, makes it easy, it doesn't seem like a chore to them. Uh, she just keeps them moving and it's a great thing. She puts things in a different perspective. So like she makes things fun and she like she, not everything has to be super serious and she's very into that. She loves what she does and I think that's Part of that is she loves what she does and she makes it fun for us so I never realized how hard teaching was until I started doing it I grew up with teachers and I remember my, my mom staying up at till 11 o'clock grading papers but I you don't know that until you're in the middle of it but I think for all teachers my advice would be to look at each student individually and with love and um, realize that all of them do actually want to learn they, all, all humans want to learn, but sometimes it's hard. Sometimes there's reasons and barriers why they don't want to learn. And I think we need to see past that with love and not, um, not take it personally. Sometimes things happen. Don't take it personally and just um, see them as a valuable, beautiful, hu complex human being that wants to grow and, and um, see them where they are and help them grow from that place and um, also help them to be aware of their growth. And I think for rural teachers, um, the isolation can be really hard. I think the best thing, I actually was a new teacher in Ikalaka, a new music teacher, and he was, he goes to our church and he was just talking about that. Um, I think the best thing is to tap into your community because rural, rural communities in Montana have really great um, people and um, really close knit communities. And I think tapping into that and kind of finding your people uh, is really important too and um, really trying to maybe see things through a different lens and seeing that love and closeness and support um, and I, I think for me I think it's pretty evident that that's better than living in an urban place but and I've lived in both and I really prefer this close-knit strong ties and the student I think that showing students that too is really important.